Bajaj Auto has announced its entry into the 400cc segment with its partnership with Triumph Motorcycles. Yes, both companies have launched 400cc motorcycles in India and this is Triumph's first launch in the 400cc segment and this uh, launch is happening in India first. With us right now to talk about this launch and why it's important for Triumph and Bajaj Auto is none other than Raji Bajaj, the Managing Director of Bajaj Auto. Uh, Mr. Bajaj, thank you very much for joining us. The, the pricing first, how difficult was it to keep the price at this level? How do you see the competition in the 400cc segment now? It's going to be a three-way contest. Well, Parishit, first of all, um, you know, we already have our own brand, the Domina 400, and of course the KTM 400s uh, in this segment. So the segment is not new to us as such. Um, for us, it is not just a new partnership, new products, but also a new plant uh, at Chakhan, our second plant there. And I think we've done a great job. I must congratulate uh, Joe and Pradeep and the teams for having done a fabulous job, uh, both as R&D and as supply chain, um, to have been able to achieve. What I would candidly say are the highest specs we have ever been challenged to achieve, particularly in terms of aesthetics of design uh, that Triumph has expected of us. And at the same time to have done it, as you say, at such a competitive cost. Uh, you know, it's really remarkable. I think it sets a new standard. And I think it's fair to say that without setting new standards like this, it is very hard to compete in a cluttered and mature space. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's taken five years. Mm -hmm. um, as I like to say on a lighter tone, uh, you know, we first met with Triumph in 2006, although the, uh, sorry, 2007, although the project was kicked off only in 2017. Uh, so in a way, it's taken 16 years. Uh, to come to this day uh, after we first started. So that's a world record in itself mm -hmm. that a partnership has taken 16 years to fructify into actual product. But yes, very competitive products, both in terms of performance and cost. Right. So you were already there in the 390 segment, 400cc <coughs> segment with the KTMs of the Dominar. Uh, KTM, possibly the more adventure off-roader segment. Why did you go ahead for these motorcycles You've got Royal Enfield, which is a market leader here with a 90% market share. Do you, did you feel that Royal Enfield, in a way, is unchallenged? Did you, did you see space here? Uh, why the 400cc segment? Because this is where Harley-Davidson and Hero Motor Corp are also investing. Parikshit, this needs a little longer answer. In the sense, in 2007, we were working towards our strategy to be what we had defined as being the most versatile and complete motorcycle manufacturer in the world. So we knew that with our own brand, we could uh, address the mass premium and the mass space. You know, but to uh, address advanced markets and the premium or lifestyle segment, we didn't think, quite frankly, that our brand could carry itself there. Mm -hmm. Of course, we could have designed the products uh, for those segments, as we did eventually with KTM and Triumph, but we would not have pricing power uh, you know, if we went in the Bajaj brand. So we said to ourselves that, uh, you know, I am a believer in the maxim that the opposite of a truth is another profound truth. You know, Niels Bohr said this. So we said to ourselves, there will be two mindsets at the two ends of the spectrum. Uh, a very sporty racing mindset, and the brand for that is KTM like no other. And then there will be the very classic uh, mindset uh, for cool riding, if I may call it that. And there is no brand, in my view, better than Triumph to address that space. So that is how, in 2007, we actually met up with uh, both these companies. With KTM, things progressed faster, but uh, nevertheless, we followed with Triumph afterwards. As far as Royal Enfield is concerned, you know, I say to people that uh, when the, in the U.S., when the uh, bank robber Willie Sutton was asked, uh, why do you rob the bank? Uh, and he uh, said quite simply, because that's where the money is. You know, so I would say to you that today between Bajaj, TVS, um, uh, Enfield and Hero, Bajaj has about 50% share of the profit of the industry, mm -hmm. um, you know. Um, but there are two profit pools, large profit pools outside uh, of this, which have been elusive. Mm -hmm. One is the Splendor um, and one is the Royal Enfield. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, with this brand, uh, the consumer will give us the license to compete in, in the space that uh, Royal Enfield has done so exceedingly well in. I mean, hats off to Siddharth what he's achieved. Um, and hopefully we can make some impact there. Right, so you said that if uh, Royal Field is where the money is, you'd like to rob the bank. Mm. But uh, 
This segment, according to a number of reports, the 350cc segment is growing at a CAGR of 10%, 9 to 10% per year. How big is this pie, the 350cc segment uh, plus pie, and how much are you hoping to capture with these motorcycles? Well, um, I think in volume terms, uh, currently this probably represents 10% of the industry, of the domestic industry, because as you know, the uh, bottom of the industry has shrunk a bit. So the, the, the bigger motorcycles probably represent close to 10%. Of course, as you said, Royal Enfield is uh, head and shoulders above everyone there. Uh, but that's in volume terms. In terms of revenue um, and profits, as we just said, uh, it's much larger than than 10%. So this is a huge opportunity mm. for any motorcycle maker. Mm. Um, in terms of what impact we will have, uh, you know, this only time can tell. I can only say that uh, we have an initial capacity at our new plant for 5,000 triumphs a month. Mm. Hopefully in three or four months, we are able to scale up to that volume. We have to do it carefully because, again, new plant, new people, new partnership, new product, new standards. Mm. Um, and then from there onwards, um, uh, if the domestic demand continues to expand, and of course, uh, I think from October and November, we expect uh, Triumph orders to come in from all over the world. I'm told there's a lot of excitement building up in Triumph markets across the world. So then, you know, who knows uh, where that might take us, but uh, we will scale up very rapidly mm. uh, to satisfy that demand. Right. Uh, you said Chakan 2 can go up to, from 25,000, it can go up to 45,000 and maybe even double that. What, what could you take the Chakan 2 capacity? So today it's at 25,000, but that includes about 20,000 for KTM because uh, there are months uh, where we do about 20,000 KTM between domestic and exports and 5,000 for Triumph. So that's the construct today. Uh, in the next expansion, it can go to 40,000 between these two brands. Uh, and in the long term, it could even go to 80,000, which is a million motorcycles a year. Mm -hmm. It was always our dream that mm -hmm. one day a million KTMs and Triumphs will roll out of India. Mm -hmm. you know? And I think uh, we are, we are uh, on our way to realize this dream. Right. Uh, exports are going to begin soon, probably by the uh, end of the year. Are you expecting a certain export volumes from Triumph? Have you uh, got a fair idea as of now? Uh, and we believe this is going to be exported to all Triumph markets in the world, including the UK and the United States. I am given to believe by uh, Nick, my counterpart there, CEO of Triumph, that this will indeed go to uh, all Triumph markets across the world. Um, <clears throat> I don't know uh, what their estimates for uh, uh, exports is. And I think I would not be wrong if I said that they would be a little unsure themselves because I have been through this experience with KTM in 2007 when smaller KTMs at these price points uh, was something uh, that was completely uh, uncharted waters for them. You know? So equally for Triumph, a 400cc at this sort of a price point for exports is just completely unfamiliar territory. Mm -hmm. So it becomes very difficult mm -hmm. in this kind of a uh, you know, white space mm -hmm. to uh, guesstimate what might happen. Right. But I think, as you say, we will know better by the end of the year. Right. Uh, I would also like to ask you about expanding the touch points. What Hero Motor Corp is doing, uh, that in addition to Harley's existing 25 dealerships, they will be retailing the X440 in at least 300 premium uh, outlets of Hero Motor Corp Excuse me. in the next one year or so. This is how they want to get scale and increase the footprint. What about Triumph? How will you be retailing Triumph? Is there a plan to sell it alongside Bajaj uh, or motorcycles or will it be exclusively through Triumph? So of course, I guess there's more than one way to do this. Uh, in uh, our case, Parikshit, our belief is that, you know, what is the difference between a brand and a product? Mm. Sometimes we use these words interchangeably. Mm. So to my mind, a brand is equal to, of course, product plus the story of the brand mm. plus the consumer experience that comes with the brand <clears throat> every time you interact with it as a product or communication or clubs or whatever it is. So in keeping with this approach, uh, Triumph is very clear that uh, Triumph motorcycles will be sold uh, exclusively through Triumph dealerships. So there will be no Triumph motorcycles in Bajaj dealerships or in KTM dealerships, where, which is dedicated to KTM and Husqvarna, um, <clears throat> because those two brands belong to, to KTM. Um, so we are going to expand, I think, the existing 16 or so Triumph dealerships, which have existed for the big bikes. Um, 
I don't know uh, how soon, but in a matter of months to I think about a hundred odd uh, dealerships. That in will, one month? Uh, no, in a few months time um, to about a hundred odd dealerships, which will be carrying only Triumph. Uh, many of them, which are in the metros, will carry the big Triumphs as well as these Triumphs, um, uh, middleweight Triumphs. Uh, whereas those that are in the relatively smaller places, as you can imagine, will carry uh, largely the smaller ones, mm. uh, the, the 400s, uh, maybe one or the other of the uh, the big one. But uh, the short answer is the Triumphs will only be sold through Triumph dealerships. Right. Now, uh, coming to the collaboration, you've said this has taken five years of work and you explained that meeting the standards, the fit and finish uh, of the product was was very, very difficult and your technology team uh, had to go through a lot to get things right. Give us a sense of how much has Bajaj Auto invested in this and what is the kind of investment that has come from Triumph? I can give you this number that in setting up uh, the new plant at Chakhan, uh, which includes the land building and the equipment we have put in, uh, that's a little over 200 crores of rupees. Um, and, uh, you know, quite frankly, ours is not a very capex intensive business. Uh, that's why we are still sitting on 18,000 crores of cash uh, at the end of it. Um, but having said that, um, it is very difficult to say how much of that investment is Triumph specific mm -hmm. because as, uh, as you can imagine, through the same assembly line, through the same paint line and sometimes through the same machining lines, mm -hmm. we'll go uh, the KTM also and also the Triumph, mm -hmm. which change in uh, jigs or fixtures or hangers or uh, you know, uh, other tools. So uh, I can't say this investment is only for KTM or this is only for Triumph. So whether it's the people at the plant, the equipment, the plant itself, even our supplier investments and uh, uh, even at the front end, although the physical dealerships are separate, very often there is the same dealer uh, standing behind that, uh, who is a Bajaj dealer, a Chetak dealer, a Triumph and a KTM dealer. So the investments are largely common.